Hey Facebook, this is Pastor Sarah with Wednesday's Word coming to you from my cute little office corner of my bedroom um, having a moment with God just before talking to you. Um, you know, I love worship music so I was sitting here worshiping, listening to some worship music um, and I just realized I forgot to do my blocking again. What is wrong with me? I cannot remember. I just want people to interrupt apparently because that's what happens. That's what, how life works. I just want people to interrupt my Wednesday's word. Um, I totally forgot to do that again. I need to do some sort of like reminder or something to set. I don't know why that's the one thing I forget. I'll do everything else, but that one thing I cannot get a hold on. Hey, Pastor Donna. Um, yeah, I don't know. What, so somebody's going to interrupt and that's just what happens in the name of Jesus. I pray that they do not. Hopefully we won't have issues with interrupters, but cause I clearly cannot remember to turn off the, you know, notification thing. <laughs> I don't want to do anyways. Um, how was your guys' day? I had a pretty great day. Uh, so this was like my first official day back at work since the second COVID drama. And uh, I went in for a couple hours yesterday, but this is the first time I was in for, you know, the whole day. And I'm not liking it. Not work part, but just being away. Hey, Maddie, just being away while the kids are at home. And so next week I will be working from I'll be working from home while Pastor David is gone because I need uh, to know that the kids are being accountable for like um, that they're being watched over that they're getting their work done and I can't do that with being at the actual office but I do love my office at work because it's really big I have lots of stuff there I can kind of spread out as peaceful in my office. I have a peaceful office. But, you know, it's just not feasible right now. Hi, Christina. So, I had a great day. I had uh, not a whole lot going on. I had some patients that I was dealing with and did lots of prayer time for different people. Like, the Lord was laying things on my heart all day, kind of randomly, for other people. And so, I always appreciate that. I'm, sh I'm obviously I'm sure that he appreciates the fact that I pray, but I appreciate when he lays somebody on my heart because I feel very um, privileged to be able to do that. So currently, he's laying the Facebook followers, Facebook viewers on my heart. So I'm going to pray about that. Lord, thank you for all of those who um, have a desire to learn more, who have a teachable spirit willing to learn from anywhere and anyone and they come faithfully every Wednesday night to hear what it is the Lord has laid on my heart so I am so grateful for them being willing to do this um, I love learners and because I'm a lifelong learner I tend to be very excited when there's other learners that are willing to say you know I don't know it all and if you've got something to teach me I want to listen and so I get very excited when I see people, you know, on our uh, Faith Talks with Pastor Mark, on Wednesday's Word, um, th because they're learning. They're willing to be there to learn something different, to open their hearts up to what God has to say to them in that moment. So thank you, Lord, for the lifelong learners, because it's really nice to see that there's other people that understand that you can always learn something that understand what it means to have a teachable heart. So I praise God for them. I praise you for um, letting them understand that they are living that way. In Christ Jesus' name, I pray these things. Amen. So, um, I do always pray for you, Christina, you and Landon. Um, you're on my heart quite a lot, and you and I have had lots of talks. So, yes, the Lord does lay you on my heart, and I do pray for you. Uh, so, this week, I actually got something quite interesting. Uh, actually, it wasn't this week. So just so you guys know, when I write out my Wednesday's Word, I write them out weeks in advance because the Lord will tell me something and I'll write it out and just wait until He tells me when to talk about it. And so this week, 
what I got a few weeks ago was from the book of Matthew. And it's actually Christ talking. So, again, there was one that I did a while back and I had said that, you know, it's Christ's words. And I told you about the red letters. Not all Bibles have red letters, but there are Bibles that will specifically say somewhere in the cover or even on the box that you purchased it in that it'll say a red letter Bible. All that means is that, I love you too, Christina. All that means is that the red letters in the Bible were specific quotes from Christ. The entire Bible is Christ's words. He is the author of the Bible. However, specific people heard him directly say things. So like the apostles being with Christ, they were able to quote directly things that he would say. And so the red letters are direct quotes. Like they actually heard themselves, not what they witnessed, not what they had manifest in their heart at the time, not what the Lord delivered to them, specifically stood right in front of Jesus and heard what he said. So that's the red letters. Uh, anyways, uh, my passage is Matthew 12 verse 37 and I actually wrote it out in a couple translations just because it kind of builds off of each other these three translations build and it was a little bit interesting once you find out why I really like this you'll get why I wanted to build off the meaning so the first one was Matthew 12 37 of the um, New Living Translation NLT it says the words you say will either acquit you or condemn you the words you say will either quit you or condemn you meaning they will make you guilty or make you innocent um that was the nlt then i opened up the tpt the the passion translation and the passion translation says your very words will be used as your evidence against you and your words will declare you either innocent or guilty so the Passion Translation says, hey Liz, these are your words. This is your actual evidence of whether you're guilty or innocent. The next translation was the Amplified. The Amplified says, for by your words reflecting your spiritual condition, you will be justified and acquitted of the guilt of sin. And by your words rejecting me, meaning Christ, you will be condemned and sentenced. So I'm going to read the Amplified one more time. But I want you to picture Christ talking to somebody who has said something they shouldn't have said. So think about a moment. <clears throat> that's okay, Liz. Um, think about a moment when... Um, somebody said something that they shouldn't have said to you and these words come out of your mouth for by your words reflecting your spiritual condition you will be justified and acquitted of the guilt of your sin and by your words rejecting me will be condemned and sentenced that was the S, the scripture for my soil. Um, there have been some things that I've been dealing with recently that um, this is why, you know, God pointed this out to me. I know that. This is why he made it very clear to me. But I know from our flock that I'm not the only one that has dealt with this. There are some people that are watching that have dealt with this too. And so obviously... The right people needed to hear um, that, you know, Christ had to deal with this himself. We're in good company. If Christ dealt some, with something that we're dealing with and he managed to um, handle it very well, we're in good company. So, anyways, the O was that, like I said, Matthew twelve thirty seven was actually red letters. So, directly, Christ speaking. Jesus was teaching the religious leaders, so not common people. 
and actually not even his disciples. He was actually talking to the religious leaders, those who grew up learning the Torah, those who could recite it backwards and forwards, those who proclaimed that they knew more than God did, the religious leaders, the hot shots, as Pastor Mark calls them. Um, Jesus was talking to the religious leaders, not the common people. And the, he was telling them that, that they were going to be held accountable for the words that came out of their mouth. So here's the seriousness of their words. These religious leaders were actually um, accusing Christ of getting his power through Satan. These religious leaders did not believe that he was the Messiah and all of the miracles that he was able to perform, all of the healings, um, casting out of demons, everything. Adrian, hi brother, I love you. Sorry, I got a squirrel moment because Adrian's there. Anyways, um, and so these these religious leaders were actually saying Christ was not the true Messiah. The only way he was able to do miracles like healing people and casting out demons and um, bringing people back from the dead was he had to be working through the power of Satan. This is what they were telling him. So Christ is like, you're going to be held accountable for your words, dear. And... Uh, inform them that they will either be acquitted or condemned for what they say. Now, can you imagine? <laughs> I, I cannot fathom anybody being daring enough to go up to somebody. Let's just leave. Let's just leave the fact that he was the Messiah out of the picture just for a moment. But the fact that he was doing miraculous things. So, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And this man, this random person, brought people back from the dead, cast out demons, healed people, made people see, made lame people walk. These are all good things. These are like the opposite of steal, kill, and destroy. And <laughs> the religious leaders went up to him and said that... You know, he had to have been doing all of this through the power of Satan. No. <laughs> I can't imagine having the guts or the gall to go up to somebody just to, you know, again, leave the Messiah side out of this. Going up to this man who's done all this and telling him that he's doing it through the power of Satan. Now, let's put the Messiah factor into that. They were being um, influenced by Satan to deny him as Christ. Um, so they were saying things because they did know the Torah. They knew the five, first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, very well. This, that's why they were called religious leaders. They knew it. They... they you know, could quote it. They could directly babble on about what it said. Um, but, you know, the Bible also says that Satan and his demons can quote scripture. So that doesn't make you a Christian. So, I don't know, just that whole Christ doing all these wonderful things and somebody telling him he's doing it through the power of Satan was a little wow to me. But that was the observation orientation. The insightful interpretation was, you know, I have my commentaries and uh, Bible dictionaries and stuff, and one of my favorites is Tony Evans. Um, Tony Evans actually, if you guys don't know this, he's the daddy of Priscilla Schreier. She's one of my favorite female pastors. Um, and Tony, Evan has a, Tony Evans has a commentary. And his commentary is talking, um, in this particular passage, he was saying that the way to tame your tongue, meaning how to control what comes out of your mouth, how to stop yourself from saying something that is downright stupid, because that's, I mean, the religious leaders, that was stupid. That was just moronic. Um, 
but the way to tame your tongue is to address your heart. And the way to address your heart is to devote it to the kingdom of God. So anytime you feel like you're going to say something, check to see if your heart is in the right place. If it lines up with the word of God, then it might be worth saying. If it doesn't line up with the word of God and it is emotion driven, then that's not something you should be saying. You should tame your tongue because Matthew 12, 37 says, your words will acquit or condemn you. So would you like to be acquitted or condemned? And hey, Rhett, and you, you saying things that are harmful to people, saying things that directly affect them because you're emotion driven, it's evidence that will condemn you. So, <clears throat> Tony Evans has a great commentary. Um, anyways, my mouth will be held accountable for whatever I do to the least of these. So the Bible actually says, what you do unto the least of these, you do unto me. So if I am saying something nasty about somebody, um, <clears throat> oh, you know what? I'm just going to get real. <laughs> I'm going to get real right now. Holy Spirit, just tell me something. This is not something that I do, but I'm going to use it as an example because I've heard it. Um, if I choose to say, I don't want to listen to Pastor Mark's preaching because I don't like the way he preaches. Or if I choose to say, um, I don't know, I'm not a fan of the way Madison sings because I think she sings over the top or whiny or whatever words you want to give it. If I choose to say that um, I don't like the way that Liz greets people because she's rude, I am literally saying it as if I'm saying it to Christ. Whatever I do to the least of these, I do unto him. Hi, Antoinette. So you can have all the kinds of opinions you want, but when it comes out of your mouth, you might as well be looking right at the face of Jesus because that's who you're attacking. Every single person that was put on this planet was created by God. And I don't know about you, but when I make something, when I put something together, it's precious to me. I have five things in some way or another that I personally made because of God. And they're precious. And I will protect every single ounce of them. God made every single person you have complained about. God made every single person you have chosen to say something nasty about. God made every single person that you have chosen to put down, call names, make fun of, um, talk trash about. God made them. Whatever you do unto the least of these, you do unto me. You are making fun of God. You are putting down God. I say that, but I mean, it's right back at me. I'm looking at myself in the video right now. So it's not a, 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 just a direct um, statement to you. This applies to me. I wrote this because I know that whatever I say is a direct connection to me saying it to God. So whatever I choose to say about somebody, I'm speaking, if I'm speaking negatively about them, I'm speaking negatively about God, the one who created them. My tongue against others is against God and will be held accountable. I need to guard my words and in order to guard my heart, for God's will to be worked in my life. If I want God's will to be worked in my life, my heart needs to be guarded. 
If I let things spew out of my mouth that shouldn't come out of my mouth, I'm not guarding my heart. Not to mention the fact that I'm not guarding your heart. If I'm attacking you with my words, I am damaging a child of God. I'm not doing my job as a pastor. I'm not doing my job as a Christian. So it's my job to guard my heart, but it's also my job as a fellow Christ follower to guard the hearts of those around me. So me speaking negatively about somebody is attacking God and damaging that person's heart. So that was my insightful uh, interpretation. <laughs> uh, I mean, it gets a little rough sometimes, I'm telling you. When I, when I sit and do my quiet time with the Lord, I am in it. I am, Lord, like put me in my place. Correct any misunderstanding I have. Make me understand what it is you want me to see, hear, or feel from your word today. I am in it. And if he lays me bare, <laughs> then, then clearly I needed to be. And right now, this word wasn't just for me. This was meant for those who are listening. So he's laying you bare. Pay attention to your fellow brothers and sisters. Guard their hearts. Put a filter on your mouth so that you don't damage them. Because that word that comes out is attacking God. That word that's coming out is the evidence against you. So, yeah, that was, anyhow. Uh, my L, my life application was, Lord, I never want to be the person who tears down another or causes another to see you as anything other than the source of provision and love. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to remind me of the Christ filter I have been working at using. Thank you for continuing to help me grow in this area as I am a human who makes mistakes, but I am so glad that those mistakes of unfiltered mouth are nearly non-existent now. I will continue to be vigilant in protecting my heart and others' hearts by guarding my words. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I am a human. I do make mistakes. Um, I do haphazardly say something, um, every now and then, but if you knew me 20 years ago, you would be like, who is this person now? If you knew me 20 years ago, you wouldn't want to have a relationship with me, ever. If you knew me 10 years ago, it was still rocky, very touch and go. But I have gotten better and better and better about protecting my words, about protecting those around me, uh, those around me's heart. Um, I've had to make adjustments, I've had to uh, like I'm doing right now, think before I say something because it's very easy to just say quick stuff. But when you understand who it is you're talking to, when you understand ultimately you're speaking to God when you open your mouth, you're saying words that are bringing life or bringing death. When you understand that, you will pause and think about the most appropriate way to say something. You will pause and think about how to say something in love. You will pause and think, mm, shut your mouth. And there are times that I literally in my head will hear myself say, shut your mouth. Because as much as I would fleshly like to say something, the God in me does not. And he overrules my life. Um, now, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. I'm really working on my face. Because <laughs> my mouth is pretty much under control. It's very rare that something slips out. And I mean very rare. It's, it's, it's almost there. But my face struggles. So, you know, from one fellow 
follower of Christ to another, I could always use prayers on my face. So anytime you guys want to add that into your prayer time with the Lord, I would appreciate it because my face does give me away a lot. Um, I'm working on it. I'm getting, I'm getting better. Um, thank you, Liz. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm getting better, but my face does give me away a lot. Um, I just saw my sissy's picture. She's watching. Anyways, I love you guys. Um, I do have a couple of quick things I wanted to tell you. Actually, ooh, so excited. Okay, number one, um, this Friday, 7 p.m. Actually, let me back up a little bit. This Friday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. and then from 4 to 6 p.m., if you have anything that you want to donate to the church for a yard sale, drop it off. There's going to be people that are going that are going to be there to unlock the door for you to bring it into the church. Please have it uh, pre-priced for sale and know that you're not getting it back because whatever you donate it, we're either going to sell it and all the proceeds go to the church or, <clears throat> excuse me, um, or it's going to get um, donated to other th situations. Anyways, so this Friday, 8 a.m. to 10, 10 a.m. or 4 to 6 p.m., you can drop things off. Then, Friday night at 6, 7 p.m., oh my goodness, I'm like excited about all to tell you that I'm not paying attention to what I'm saying. This Friday at 7 p.m. is Worship with the Word, and get yourself down to the building. It is not the same on Facebook Live, I promise you. From somebody who witnessed it myself, it is totally different. So, 7 p.m., inside the church building, Worship with the Word, it is worth it. Um... Saturday at 7 a.m. we are having our yard sale that's going to last until 2 p.m. You can come as early as 6 o'clock to help, but the sale will not start until 7 for all the early birders. Um, anyways, uh, yard sale from 7 to 2, all proceeds go to the church. And then Sunday at 10 a.m. we have church inside the building where you should be. And we look forward to seeing you. We hope you're there. And then 6.30, I have an interview that the Lord will tell me who it is. I have a couple ideas, but I'm just waiting for his go-ahead. But I had some things I want to tell you. Number one, we have the ladies' retreat in April, April 8th, 9th, and 10th. And there are some spots available for whoever wants them. You need to contact me um, to let me know because they're going to go fast. I literally only have 15 places, and I think 12 of them are already taken. So if you know somebody that wants to go on a ladies retreat, it is going to be out of this world. I am so excited. Um, Pastor Don and I have some things that we're going to be doing. Um, we've got great, I have great things planned with my women's council for this weekend for you guys to have a good time with sisters. And then, oh, another thing I want to tell you. So I don't know if you guys know this, and I, I, I'm really hoping that you utilize it, but the APS school system and their designated schools, so over by my house, it's um, uh, Volcano Vista, Cibola High School, and James Monroe Middle School. But all around the city of Albuquerque, if you have kids, go to the schools. There are specific schools. Get on APS's website between 11 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. You can pick up lunches on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for free. And you don't have to pay for anything. You don't have to fill any form out. You don't have to tell them what your name and age is. You don't have to fill out anything. Because we're not in the school buildings, the funding is going towards feeding our community. And so they give you, they gave my kids each a bag this big, I kid you not, of two breakfasts and two lunches Monday, and then the same today, and then the same is gonna be for Friday. Any person, you could literally pull up and say, I have three kids. They put the stuff in your car, off you go. There is no form that you have to fill out. Please utilize this. I went today to pick up my kids' lunches and the ladies are like, please tell all of your friends. And I asked her why and she goes, because nobody's using this and we have all this food for people. Go get some food for your kids, man. 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. They're at designated schools, so look on the APS's websites. Um... I really don't have anything else to tell you. I love you guys. I, I'm just like, I'm kind of bouncy because I have Holy Spirit right now with me. And, you know, 
talk in his word and trying to remind you to protect yourselves and protect other people's hearts. So as always, if you have any questions or you're doing um, your personal time and something comes up and you don't understand, please text me. This is my passion. I love teaching the word of God and I will be happy to point you in the right direction. So I love you guys. Have a great night. God bless you, and I will see you again next Wednesday, 7 p.m. Bye, guys.